President Biden is talking about making changes to the 401k in terms of how your contributions will, will affect your taxes. But what does it mean for you? That's what we're gonna discuss in this video. Now, I don't know about you guys, but every time a politician talks about making changes to a retirement plan, my chest starts to tighten a little bit. You know what I mean? I get those chest palpitations going. Grab your cup of coffee or whatever your beverage of choice is, including alcohol if you want, and let's discuss this. My name is Mike the CPA and welcome to Money and Life TV. If you're checking out the channel for the first time, we produce videos around finances, investing, and taxes to help people like yourself build wealth. To support my work and to help others see this video over YouTube, if you can drop a like, I'd really appreciate it, or even consider subscribing to the channel for more weekly content around these various topics. After doing several hours of research on this topic, You know, this is something I was really interested in. As somebody who prepares taxes for a living and someone who thoroughly enjoys investing, I wanted to know what was going on. Now, this is just proposed. And when I say proposed, I really mean just proposed. However, if this eventually comes to light, well, then I wanted to know, like, how is it going to affect us? I mean, do we still contribute to our 401k? Does it still make sense? You know, what's what's going, what's he want here? What's he trying to do? Well, after digging into it a little further, I found that the ultimate goal of this is really just to help, well, one, it's to raise taxes, which we're going to talk about in a second, but also to help equalize the contributions of lower income individuals to give them a greater benefit when they contribute to their 401k. In a nutshell, those are the two things I think he's trying to accomplish. Right now, the, the way the 401k works, just a traditional 401k, is if you're somebody who's in a high income bracket, let's say you're at the highest tax rate of 37%, when you contribute money to your 401k, it's like getting a 37% tax reduction for that year. Now, although you know you don't you don't pay the tax now, you eventually would pay the tax later in the future when you take the money out. The idea is hopefully your income is lower when you have to take the money out. And so you pull that money not out at a 37% rate, but hopefully a lower rate at a future point in time. But the problem is, or what, what Biden points out, is that an individual who's only in the 12% tax bracket, marginal tax bracket, or even the 22% tax bracket, is not going to get the same type of benefit, right, as somebody who is in the 37% bracket. Their savings, tax savings, is just not going to be as much because they're not paying as much tax as the person in the 37% bracket. So what Biden wants to do is he wants to help equalize that with a tax credit. What Biden is proposing is a flat 26% tax credit on the amount of contributions people put into their 401k. Now, when I'm talking about 401k here, I'm just generally speaking about traditional 401ks. I'm not really referring to a Roth 401k at this point in time. So the way it would work is if a person, let's say, puts in $10,000 into their 401k, they'd get a 26% tax credit on that on the back end. So they would have a tax credit of $2,600 effectively. The way the 401k works now, as it stands, let's say you have a $100,000 income, you put $10,000 into your 401k, you're able to defer that $10,000 of income into a future date, and it goes into your retirement account, right? When you go to file your taxes, you don't pay taxes on $100,000, you pay taxes on only $90,000. So that's the way it works now. With Under Biden's proposed plan, that would no longer be the case. When a person would then put $10,000 in, it would not reduce their taxable income at all, but they would just get that tax credit of 26% on the back end instead. That's the main changes. Now let's look at some examples because I was really interested in to see who does this really affect because none of the articles I saw online, none of the videos I saw online, they didn't cover at what point or what tax rate does it really, does Biden's plan actually start to make you pay more in tax? And so that's what I've dug into in some of these examples. And let's take a look at them and see what you think. Okay, here's the first example. I'm going to show you guys. I have two different examples for you. We're first going to look at how things work under the current law. And then we're going to look at how it works under the, this would play out under Biden's proposed 401k plan changes. Oh, and before I forget to mention it, guys, the numbers you're seeing in the spreadsheet 
the tax liability calculations and things like that, I have ran through 2020 tax software to try to simulate what the actual tax would be and also for confirmation that my numbers are accurate. Scout's Honor, I did run it through tax software for all these scenarios to try to come up with the most accurate information possible when presenting this. We have two taxpayers, taxpayer one, taxpayer two. Both taxpayers, we're gonna have a single filing status for consistency. Taxpayer one makes 120,000 in wages. Taxpayer two makes 50,000 in wages. Because taxpayer one has a higher income, his tax rate is 24%. Taxpayer two's tax rate is 12% only because they have a lower income. Taxpayer one contributes $18,000 to their traditional 401k. Taxpayer two contributes $7,500 to their traditional 401k. The net tax deduction or the net tax benefit for taxpayer one is the amount of the contribution of 18,000 times his tax rate of 24%. So that's how much of a net tax savings they get because they contribute to their 401k. For taxpayer two though, it's lower because they have a lower tax rate. So $7,500 is what they contribute. So their next net tax benefits only $900 as you're seeing here on the spreadsheet. So that's where those numbers are derived. Now let's continue on down the line here and we're almost done with this example. Taxpayer one has an AGI of 102,000 because they're able to reduce their gross income of 120,000 by the amount of contributions of 18,000, therefore is left with $102,000 left in income. They then take the standard deduction, which this is the single 2020 standard deduction rate, and it, they get a taxable income of $89,600. That's the amount they pay tax on. So taxpayer one's tax liability, assuming they have withheld nothing the whole year, is $15,590 in that example. Let's do that. Let's look at taxpayer two. Taxpayer two has gross income of $50,000. They are able to reduce that amount by the amount of their contribution. Therefore, their adjusted gross income, their AGI is $42,500. They take the standard deduction as well. Their taxable income is $30,100. Their tax liability is $3,418. Now let's look at what would happen given the same result or given the same facts, but under Biden's proposed plan changes. Biden's plan, this is how things would play out given the same facts, but now we have a tax credit on the back end. Taxpayer one would make the same amount, same filing status, same tax rate, same everything. However, when they contribute money to their 401k, their traditional 401k of 18,000, it does not reduce their adjusted gross income like it did ab above. Now, because now they're gonna have that as their total adjusted gross income. St the standard deduction still applies, let's say, and I'm just using the 2020 standard deduction. This could change in the future. I, I think it's proposed to go back to about half of this amount. Don't know, but that's what I think has been proposed. So let's just keep moving on down the line, given these facts. And taxable income then for this individual is now $107,600. Their tax liability before any tax credits is now $19,904. They, however, they get a tax credit of 26%, right? Based on contributions of 18,000, if we take the 18,000, dollars times 26%, that means they get a tax credit of $4,680, which is pretty good, to be honest. Therefore, their tax under their tax liability was 19,904, but it gets reduced by the credit of this amount, the 4,680, 4, and therefore they have a remaining tax liability of $15,224. So $15,224, I know this is not on the spreadsheet, so let me go back up here. So $15,224 compared to their original of $15,594. So they're actually still better off. They're still better off under Biden's plan than they were in the, given the old facts and circumstances. But you can see it's pretty close. It's like within $200 difference. So what does that tell me? It tells me that as their income goes up, it's somebody's gonna become worse off with this credit. But for people in the 24% bracket, they're probably good. They're probably gonna pay the same or, or maybe even less tax with the tax credit. Let's look at taxpayer one now, because as I mentioned, the or taxpayer two, I'm sorry, taxpayer two under Biden's plan. 
Because as I mentioned, Biden's plan is to help equalize the, the tax benefit for those who contribute to retirement. Because he's trying to get people with lower incomes to contribute more to retirement, which is hard. He's, they're trying, but they're trying to incentivize them to to do that. So same facts: the fifty thousand dollars they contribute seventy five hundred dollars. We know under Biden's plan that the seventy five hundred dollars it will not reduce their their AGI anymore, right? Under under Biden's rules, therefore their AGI is fifty thousand dollars. They take the standard deduction of twelve thousand four hundred. Taxable income is thirty seven thousand six hundred dollars. Their tax liability before the credit is four thousand three hundred and eighteen dollars. Now once again, how do we calculate that? We just basically take the amount that they contributed times 26%, and there's the credit of 1950. Let's look at how their tax liability turned out compared to taxpayer one. Okay, now let's compare the tax liability. So we know their tax liability would be 4,318 before the credit, so 4,318. We subtract the 1950, the 26% credit they're supposed to get. Their tax liability after the credit is 2,368 under Biden's plan. Before that, their tax liability was 3014 So they're actually better off. So for people with lower incomes, they're actually going to be better off under, under this 401k contribution scenario. Now, in the second example, I've ran a scenario where a person makes even more income to see at what point do they really start to pay more in tax under Biden's 401k plan? Or at what point does their contribution to their 401k help them less under this new proposed plan? Under the current law, let's just look at it how, how it is now. A single person, let's say they make $200,000 in wages, which means that their marginal tax rate is 32%. They contribute the $18,000. They're able to reduce their AGI by $18,000, right? Because we take the two hundred grand minus eighteen, dollars they get an adjusted gross income of $182,000. They get the standard deduction. Let's just say that they, that they don't itemize. Their tax liability is then $35,288. So remember that number, 35,288. Now let's look at what happens to them under the same facts, but under Biden's plan. 200 grand in income, 32% tax rates. Okay, that's the same. Contributions the same. But now remember under Biden's plan, can we deduct our contributions? No. Therefore, their AGI for tax purposes is, or their AGI is 200,000. They take the standard deduction of 12,400. Therefore, their taxable income is now 187,600, which generates a tax liability of $41,048. That's their tax liability there. But that's before the credit. Now we got to apply the credit. Well, the credit is 26% of, of their contributions, right? Which is their contributions is 18,000 times 26%. There's the 4,680 and we're going to apply that. My mouse tipped over. Whoops. Going a little crazy over here. You can't see it. But okay. So now we're going to take 41,448, the tax liability. We're going to reduce it by the credit. So let's just subtract the credit out. Therefore, their tax liability, their net tax liability now is 36,368 compared to what it was up here under the under the current laws of 35,288. So now they're worse off, right? Now now at this point, people start to become worse off under this plan. 35,288, subtract it. So now they're gonna pay about $1,000 more in tax. As you can see, if you're in the 24% bracket or lower, the tax credit's probably gonna help you or you're gonna be around the same for the most part, maybe within $100 or two, but for the most part, you're gonna be about the same. But under Biden's proposed plan, and once you get to the 32% bracket, 35, 37, well, in fact, he proposes that he's going to raise the 37% bracket, I believe, to 39.6 again, which is what it used to be. You're going to see that that tax credit of 26%, that flat rate, loses its benefit as your income increases. So therefore, yes, it does help people with lower incomes get a greater benefit. It does accomplish that. But on the back end, though, people with higher incomes, of course, are going to pay more tax. So those are, that's the pros and cons of this plan. In summary, from those examples, the 401k for high income earners, the traditional 401k, is going to become less valuable. But for low income earners, the 401k contributions for traditional 401k is going to become more valuable. But they think from all the research I can find, and I think for the most part I agree with it, is if you're a high income earner and you realize you're going to start to pay more tax using a traditional 401k, 
I think they're going to start to seek out other investment options. They're going to maybe look at just putting the money in a Roth 401k if they have that as an option. They're going to look outside of the 401k altogether, which I know concerns mutual fund managers because they make a lot of their money from getting people to contribute to their retirement plans. That's where Wall Street makes a lot of money. But nonetheless, you can see that their value of their contribution for higher income earners in the 32% bracket or up are going to start to diminish. Biden also wants to do like automatic 401k enrollment. If, for example, you work at a company that doesn't really have a good 401k or pension option or whatever, they want to allow employees to have access to that. So they don't know if they're going to do a government type of defined contribution plan or if they're going to give the employer incentives to create that plan, but something so that any employee, no matter where you work, can basically contribute to a 401k or type of retirement plan that they can have access to. And lastly, the thing I want to really stress on here, whenever a politician, whether they're Democrat, Republican, whatever, comes out and says, oh, we're going to do this or this with your retirement plan or your tax deductibility of your contributions. The only way to really know, like truly, truly know if it's going to help you or hurt you is to simulate it like I did here in tax software to try to determine how that will impact you. There's news articles that talk about this stuff, but they never, I could not find, I spent hours researching this, guys. I could not find a single article that did this detail of analysis. They just briefly touch on it, and they don't go into the detail of who really gets affected and how it all plays out, which is why I ran the scenarios for you here. And also, honestly, like I wanted to see for myself who is this was really going to affect. And you can see through the examples that it does hurt people once they're in the 32% bracket or higher primarily. All right, now that you've heard what these proposed changes are, and that now that we've went through a few examples, how do you feel about having a tax credit of 26% versus being able to take a deduction against your gross income? Do you like it? Do you dislike it? Why or why not? Thank you so much, everyone, for spending time with me today over YouTube. It means a lot. Like the video if you liked it. Share this with family and friends, coworkers, so they're aware of these coming changes. Make sure you're subscribed for our future weekly videos around finances, investing, and taxes. Live life uncaged, and I'll see you in the next episode. I love you all. Peace.